We'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Gangsta Chronicles podcast, and I am Big Steel along with my homeboy. Gia. And today, man, we got one of my folks in the studio with us, man, from the greatest city on the mother planet, from the city of Cleveland, man. One of the most, from one of the most iconic groups of all time, man, done been bit, stole from, emulated, but never duplicated. Mm-hmm. My mother. Own boy Lazy Bone from the Almighty Bone Thugs. What's cracking, dog? Ah, man, you know what it is. That Cleveland connection in the building. For sure, man. You know you from sl- the city, dog, so I had to get you to get the you old slide. You try to slide some shit in there, huh? Yeah, yeah, try to slide in there from the city nigga. on the motherfucking planet. The nigga, Hub City, nigga. <laughs> they, they just Hub breathe. City, nigga. You a transformer. Hey, you know what? Hey, this is what I always go through, <laughs> Lazy. This is what I tell him and the homie Glasses. Without Ohio, it wouldn't be no West Coast music. Hey, man, we got the funk. The funk come from Ohio, bottom the, line. The funk come from Ohio, dog. We love California. California is my home. I love it. Love the people here. Hold on a second. Let they pull your mic towards you. Okay. Yo, yo. Check, there check. Right there. Yeah, so, you know, just with all the funk, man, from from Roger Troutman, man, just on everything. The, that the West man, don't love and embrace played, so much, dog. You played football, nigga. Get up out of here. Man, it don't matter. That's the hometown city, but laying off. I'm at to. I'm at to tell Maria to snatch that drum machine out your house right now. You, just, <laughs> you, just, you two hip hop for me right now. Hey man, you know what? I'm a brother that just love music, and you coming from the city of Cleveland, man, like I come from, man. And I know you don't been asked this a million times, man. Because y'all did something nobody else was doing at that time. Y'all incorporated harmonies with the rhyming. Mm-hmm. Where did y'all, how did y'all come up with that? Man? I mean, you know, Cleveland is a singing city. You got the OJs, Levert, you know what I mean, Rude Boys, all that whole R&B flavor was thoroughly bred in Cleveland, you know what I'm saying? And my mom sings, so, you know, we come from, we come from that school born in the, in the 70s, you know what I'm saying? We grew up with the Temptations and, you know, Dale Phonics, all, all them old school Motown groups, you know what I mean? It was embedded from our parents' music, you know what I'm right. saying? So when, when we was growing up, it was like, you wanted to be a rapper. You ain't want to be a singer. Although we were singers, we did New Edition. You know what I'm saying? We we emulated all that. Michael Jackson, New Edition. Right. But in the streets, you know what I mean? You wanted to be a rapper because you wanted to be hard. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Definitely like, if you was coming from the streets. Right. You, know, you ain't want to be known as a along, pretty boy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Rap you know what I'm saying? Along, you went from wanting to be the New Editions and the Jackson Fives to you wanted to be the Run, Run DMCs, DMCs and the Houdinis you know and the sh- like that, so definitely that was our generation of time when we was coming to pass from that. Absolutely, yeah, man. And you from the Claire, man. Um, y'all right across from Glenville, right? Yeah, right across from Glenville. Glenville I went to Glenville, area. dog. I used to have to walk through that mother every day because I lived off. Um, I lived off 103rd, yeah, and Superior, but we claimed 100, you know, 10.5. You mm-hmm. know, that was our yeah. section. Yeah, and at that time, if you was walking through. You know, off of St. Clair, you might get touched on a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, you might yeah. have a few altercations on the way home. Oh, man, St. Clair, St. Clair, like, people really don't know how segregated Cleveland really was. Like, mm-hmm. when I came out to California, I was culture shocked because you had Mexicans and different people. Were like, in mm-hmm. Cleveland, it's all black. It's all black. East side and... Cleveland, like, when you, when you walk in them streets right Hell there, yeah. you got to deal with niggas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, and it used to be divided. That was the funny thing about it because you have a cat that lived, you might have went to elementary school with him, oh, yeah. but he stay on this side, and you stay on this side, and y'all niggas is feuding, and you really don't know why. It's just that you know when you walk through certain, at least for me, because I'm a little bit older than you, you used to have to squabble. You used to have to have your squabble game yeah, so right. We went to uh, we went to FDR, you know what I'm saying? So we, we had it out with Patrick Henry, the other, yeah. the other junior high school, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Was. Like, so... One of my great friends in life, his name Ken Dog, Mighty Mo Thug, you know what I'm saying? So we used to have to squab with them niggas all the way until we got bussed to the same school. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like in, in high schools, but in junior high, that was that side, that was that side. If you crossed it, it was on and cracking. Yeah, yeah, man. I know um still coming out here from Cleveland and seeing how we got down with how was it different? You know what, man? California is deceptive as a mother. 
because as Lake and attest, Cleveland is a ghetto. Yeah. Like up there, it ain't no in between. But out here, you could be in a place that look nice. suburban as hell and look nice, mm -hmm. but you be smack dead in the middle of the hood. Like California right. is nice. It's like if you a homeless nigga. And, or if you in person ain't got no money and you sleeping in your jacket, you right. know what I'm saying? You got the winter you dealing with. Mm -hmm. Ain't no money up in that motherfucker. At least out here, you can work a monkey hustle out here. A nigga can go get him a job at motherfucking Walmart working at night or a job as a security guard or somewhere. Right. In Cleveland, if it ain't cracking, it ain't cracking. You ain't got no choice yeah. but to either hook a crook. Yeah, when we first touched down out here, we touched down in Mansfield, in Mansfield hood. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And to me, that shit looked it nice. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So we walk into the store to go get brews and things like that. We thinking it's okay, but niggas cornered us. You know what I'm saying? They like, hey, man, if you're going to be around here, you got to claim something, nigga. Like, we got to protect you. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, man, we ain't going to be here long. We rappers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, for sure. But, like, the decept like, you know the projects in Cleveland mm -hmm. look like the projects. Out here, like, every... It's California. California is beautiful out yeah, here. Yeah, man. I used to think, man, living up in... Um, I used to think, man, when I used to go visit um, homies that live different places, I would go up to, like, Bedford and different places, Shaker mm -hmm. Heights. I thought that was nice. I was like, man, they rich. Yeah, you go up there. I mean, you don't, we don't even go up there because you're scared to get pulled over up there. You that's know what, what I'm saying? saying. But out here in California, dog, that's the thing. Everything is it, it's nice, man. Like, because I was in... I came to Long Beach in 88, right? Mm-hmm. And the only thing that was, the, when I started realizing it was the same kind of was the sack. You know what I'm saying? Everything mm -hmm. was about the sack at that time. You getting you a sack, man, you getting on with a zone or, or a 50 piece, you know, 50 piece of a zone. You the hustle, you, you yeah. You start hustling, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, so we ain't, we ain't know what to expect. All we knew was menace to society, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Watching y'all niggas on the movie, so we, we ain't know, you know, all we heard was the gang, the, uh, uh, riots had just went down all right. and all that shit. So when we got out here, we didn't know. We didn't know, you know what I'm saying? So this this California, I'm from Cleveland, phone IA, just to let everybody know. I left Cleveland, I was 18 years old. You was like me. I was 17 when I first came out. I'll be 49 this year, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So the rest of my years, I've been out here yeah, in California. Embedded. In, embedded. I mean, yeah. so I'm... I'm a Cleveland, California nigga. Exactly, man. Cause I can't, man. I ain't gonna lie. Last time I went to the crib, dog, I couldn't do more. I can't do past a week, my dude. Oh, man, you can't. I can't do past a week, cause you, you see, you, a, you can't. The man, no. You might talk all that. Shit. I love California, though, dog. No. Shit. Hell yeah, it's the. Shit. What's the longest you stayed when you went back home? You know what, man? Once I make my runs and go, because I got aunties, man, that's getting up in their eighties and stuff. So I try to make it home a little bit more frequently. Right. Um. I could do a week, dog. Once I, because I got a big ass family. Once I hit the family in Cleveland, then I go out to Akron and all that stuff. That little surround area, I might hit Columbus if I got time. Mm -hmm. Once I do that and see everybody straight, dog, I'm ready to go. It's too slow, my dude. Yeah, it's, it's slow, man. And then you know, like we still bringing the opportunities there. You know what I mean, like. Mm -hmm. it, you know, they like, well, you know, do it from home. Do it, but all the resources is here. Yeah, exactly. Bottom line, you know what I mean. It's so, hard because. One of the things y'all did that was a big deal, man, and I was really hoping that it took, when y'all built Mo Thug Records, y'all actually had based it in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was dope because I had, you know, my people hit me with excitement. You know, Bone got a record company. We go try to, I know niggas was talking about, I know y'all stay got, y'all lobby stay full of people trying to submit demos, didn't they? Yeah, man, Mo Thug headquarters was wild. Yeah, man, what made y'all decide to just keep it in Cleveland? I mean, back then, the, the, the mission was to come out here to, to be something, to make some of ourselves, to bring it home anyway. You know right. what I mean? Like, we wanted to go home to make a difference, you know what I mean? But we just didn't know how much work that really in, entailed, you know what Still, I'm saying? Man. Like, it's like it's nothing, nothing was there. So it'll probably be a generation after me before we get it all the way built up because we started from nothing. Yeah, for real, man. That's why it's so, so, because Cleveland, man, almost like had the worst luck in the world, man. We lost the football team. Man. You know what I'm saying? Remember when dude took the football team out the city? Yeah. I, I really yeah. cried when that happened, my nigga. I right. was like, oh, hell yeah, I was mad oh, than the motherfucker. We all was hurt, man. I was mad than the motherfucker. Dog took the Browns and then them niggas around and won a championship like a few years later. I was no, mad than the same. 
Niggas Same year, huh? Baltimore and won a championship. Won a championship. I felt like that should have been ours. You know what I mean? feel like the economy just didn't, it, what, the fan base, what happened? Bro, I'm going to tell you something about Cleveland. You was, a, you was a nigga who was, you know, from the streets, born and bred Cleveland. You know, What happened? Man, I think it's a combination of poverty, man, and a lack of opportunity. You know, because you think about it, man, if Bone wouldn't have made their trip out here, Ain't no tell. Y'all possibly could have got picked up by somebody in New York, but I can't picture y'all on no other label other than Ruthless. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, um, we, we had a choice, though. We could have went to the East Coast. It was closer. Mm-hmm. But we was were it so, a coin flip, or was it like that uh, we, we going to the West Coast? It was y'all, nigga. Mm-hmm. Y'all had this, like, we was coming to California because of Easy e because of 8. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because of shit, Snoop had just started. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So Dr. Dre, like that whole influence, that like we was influenced in Cleveland, we was influenced by everything. But when the West Coast hit, niggas had on Dickies. It and, was a like, connection, we, for real. Yeah, we was we was California because we was on the block selling dope. Mm-hmm. So right. when dope man hit, it was like shh, that's where I want to be. Hell yeah, you got the same bug I did, man. And I think. You didn't get the East Coast bug at all, Steve? You know what? No, I mess with East Coast music heavy, man, but I always saw myself, like I told you, when I heard Six in the Morning and Ryan Pays and all that, man, I said, that's, mm-hmm. that sounds exciting to me. I ain't trying to go somewhere else where it's cold like it is here because my thing was this. If I'm going to go somewhere and struggle, I'm going to be where it's hot at and I can get some money. Absolutely. You feel what I'm saying? It's like if I'm going to go to New York, you f- around, you might have a stretch, my nigga. You might have to sleep in the car some sh- few nights. I'd rather mm-hmm. sleep in the car out here in this mother. Dog than be in Ohio or New York it's somewhere. It's crazy how some, you know, uh, the, the paths that some niggas took. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all being all the way up there, being right there by New York, y'all decide to come here. Mm-hmm. My man Primo, who was from Texas, who was a hop, skip, and a jump from Cali, he decided, F- it. But see, I'm Primo, going to New York. But check this out, me. though. If Primo don't hook up with Guru, he might not ever become Primo. You feel what I'm saying? Just, he might not. Right, But, right. you know, I, I think at the end of the day, man, it'd be divine intervention, man. I very much believe in God, man. And I think sometimes God got a plan. He'll plant little breadcrumbs along the way to let you know this because it's just a feeling. Like when I heard Ice-T. That guy yeah, was just automatic. When I heard niggas, I could picture myself out here rolling down motherfucking French off Boulevard or whatever that was. Did you have a, did you have a choice? Fly did you have a choice? You know what, man? I could have went, because I played football. That was right. my little way out. I could have went, and my grades is messed up. I could have went to a little school in Kansas called Coffeeville. Mm-hmm. And I know they took me on a trip down there, and all I saw down there was fat white girls, dog. No offense to fat white women, mm-hmm. but... Yeah, they're going to knock you and out. And they was down gonna, there, they had a table gonna be with some waiting punch. They're going to be waiting outside with a gang of <laughs> pies to throw in your face. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, I went on a little recruiting trip, so to speak, and they had a little party. And I went down there, they had a bunch of... Um, Robust women, robust white women. They had had, uh, some some healthy females. Yeah, you know, and they had some fruit punch and some potato chips on the table. And I was like, man, I don't know, man. It's even more boring than Cleveland, man. At least Cleveland ain't boring. You getting some shit the wrong shit. You right. getting to some? I, the, the, I, this generic is said they had tater chips and fruit punch. Hell yeah! yeah and I, so or either I'm gonna pick potato chips and fruit punch, <laughs> or I'm gonna go out there to where the beach at and the world look exciting. That I'm going out there sight unseen because they ain't. You know, I'm going to JC. They ain't bringing niggas on no recruiting trips. You know, right? I just knew from what I saw on TV, nigga. I'm going out to where the palm trees at. So the you girls just in the picked, bikinis. You just picked the JC and said. And I'm headed there. I'm coming to Long Beach City, and it was the best thing I ever did in my life. Shout out to Coach Will Shaw. The man changed my life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Man changed my life, man. I wound up doing some incredible things coming to California that I know for sure would have been impeded in Cleveland by a number of things. First of all, we got to go back to the lack of opportunity. Right. I would have for sure been selling because all my homeboys went on to become some of that state's biggest D-boys. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? They was mm-hmm. they was really moving some things. And along that came them niggas going doing penitentiary time. Shout out to my nigga Teddy. He just make, came home. He was just out here. The one I brought to the show in L.A. Okay. You know, me and him. The when I, we first started hustling, me and him was hustling together, but I said, I don't know if this is what I want to do full time, my nigga, but he was even then, you saw in his eyes. We made that first 1500 too. he was like, man, this, this is it right here. You stupid for leaving. You crazy for leaving. And he was a better football player than me, for real, my niggas. They wanted both of us. 
Yeah. Yeah, niggas was throwing it away, man, out there in Cleveland. But, you know, that, that, that state right there, you know, you got the Supreme Court. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got so did the police in Cleveland and Ohio, period. You know what they say about Ohio. You go on vacation, you leaving on probation because they, oh, they, they want a nigga. You go, they going yeah. to they gonna, they gonna get you with a ticket somehow. Mm-hmm. You know and I'm niggas saying? is chilling. So that, that's why I got out of there because I tried to go home and live home and all that. But when you got, like, when you, when you got the more money, and you driving bins and this, that, and you standing out, sticking out like a sore thumb. Every time I pulled out my driveway, they was boo, boo, just trying to hit me, you know, mm-hmm. keeping me keeping me in the system. I was like, so I might as well go where a drop top 500 bins is average, you know what I'm yeah, saying? So I can blend in. So that, that, that was the benefit for California for me because the lifestyle, you can spread out. Out here, you and know, you would have thought that you know, looking at you know, uh, where y'all had the status, you'd have thought in some way they would have been kind of proud to, you know, yeah, for sure. You know, we got some local boys who done made it good, and I mean, made it good, you know, as far as music is hip hop is concerned. Yeah, I was on the map as far as Cleveland is concerned, mm-hmm. and, and you would think that a local mother. Law enforcement month would be like, oh, that's bone thug, that's lazy bone. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas, we know he ain't, we know he ain't no D boy. We know he ain't gang banging or nothing right. like that. This month made it from the music, so and he's got us on the status. But you know, haterism come in all kind yeah. of shapes. And and it, it, it was worse from the people that's supposed to love you, man. It was like fifty fifty. You know what I'm saying? You had the niggas that gung ho, police. They'd give me an escort home if I'm drinking and something like that. But then his partner might be prejudiced as hell. Mm. Like fuck this, we taking him in and like they. But that's how it is. Prejudice like that. Especially man with the mentality that the white folks. That's what I tell brothers out here. I say, y'all ain't really encountered no racism out here because out here. A mother see you and be hey and go have drinks with you get in this car because it's just a little bit more progressive out here. You know, you can't racism is frowned upon out here. But back there, you got some white boys that tell you I don't with your kind. I mean, it's it's, it's they see you, they say so diddy ass. And to this day though, like they it's just born and bred when you raise like that. That's you know what I'm saying? Crazy. Like you when your parents put that in you, you know what I'm saying? It's hard to it's hard, like, I even had friends that, you know, when I went to school, we was cool as hell. But afterwards, you know, being on the west side, I couldn't go over their house or nothing like that because they parents. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, you know, it just didn't make That's just how it was, especially with the busing program in Cleveland. And they, it's crazy they kept it going because I was bused to the west side when I was in elementary. Mm-hmm. I went to Thomas Jefferson. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, not Thomas Jefferson. I went to Thomas Jefferson for junior high. I went to Clark Elementary for elementary, right? And I right across Clark. from Clark. Yeah, you went to Clark? I went to Clark. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was a white supremacist thing right across the street from Clark yeah. Elementary. I don't know if it was still there when you was there, but that's just how it was. No. Yeah, they let you know, man. Oh, man, I had a girl, Becky, tell me. She said, Norm, you're really nice, but my my, my mom says that black people are monkeys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they. That's that's one thing about, you know, that's why I like it here. You know what I'm saying? Cause you got you got you got everybody, man. All this melting pot here, California. But that's why people start migrating west a long time ago, anyway. You know. Yeah, you can make it, man. The thing is, Cleveland, man. Unfortunately, man, is a place that's marred by extreme poverty, and the conditions don't make it no better. You know, you fighting the bad ass weather, right? And then you got the just good old fashioned just haterism, man. It's hard to where if you're a person that don't attain a certain thing in your life, you gonna have people mad at you for no reason, man. It felt like they should have been you. Like, like seriously, it's the weirdest thing ever, bro. I mean, don't get me wrong. I got love for my city. Like, I love Cleveland to death. I love like, to death too. With all my heart. You know what I'm saying? I love but Cleveland that's, too. That's rough, nigga. That's yeah. mean, we ain't gonna front. Plenty, I've done plenty of shows in Cleveland. Mm. Yes, indeed. Yeah, Cleveland would. But Cleveland put something up. inside of you, though, dog. If you if you a hustler, Cleveland like give a like you just. I don't know no niggas the slackers from Cleveland. Mm-mm. Anybody I know from Cleveland, they trying to get it, man, because they understand what poverty is. It's like every day, dog. 
I don't, I never allow myself to get comfortable, no matter how much money I got in the bank or whatever, because I know with just a few twists and turns, man, you could be on your ass somewhere, man. You be oh, right back in that mother dog looking at the niggas you went to elementary school with. I think that's mm -hmm. any niggas uh, mentality or any yeah. person, period, uh, male or female, man. If you just born with that, you know, go get uh, mentality. It, it's hard to stop trying to find the next hustle, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or the next, you know, job or the next come up or whatever it is. Uh, that That's for simple-minded motherfuckers who are settled with just where I am and oh, well. Oh, yeah, you can't right, never you know get mean? content. Right. You can't never get content, man. You know what? One thing I wanted to um, ask you about, man, at the time you came out here with Ruthless, man, Easy E was really up close and personal with y'all. Mm -hmm. Did he ever take you to the house in Norwalk? Hell yeah. Man, that house is legendary, bro. Hey, man, that house in Norwalk, that's, yeah. man, that's where we used to go. Like, he would have other artists come out of town. We was big drinkers, like, you know what I'm saying? And he would be like, y'all niggas can't drink more than these niggas. We'd tear that nigga house up. We'd be in that motherfucker <laughs> drunk. This nigga got AKs everywhere, just, you know what I mean? Yeah, but... Norwalk, that's where Norwalk we used to house. go, mm -hmm. do, get to do what we wanted to do. Yeah, right off the freeway, it was real low-key, man. Shout out to the homies, Skip and Twine, Big Twine. Big Twine. Yeah, they had me over there, man, one time when I never saw, I never knew that part of town. You know, being in Norwalk, you know what mm -hmm. thing. Oh, no, yeah, he you don't Hollywood go to Norwalk. To that motherfucker, yeah. man. He brought Hollywood all kind of bras over there, man. Yeah. Yeah, we used to go over there, man, and just like he'd, he'd be showing us that's when I, over there, that's how we found out he was a prankster, too. You know what I'm saying? So he would show us videotapes of him pranking CPO, and you know what I mean? We spent a lot of nights in Norwalk, man. That's cool. Yeah, man, you know, um, I still think, man, to this day, man, not to try to hash up no controversy or nothing, I don't think he easy died of AIDS, dog. I just don't think he did. I, I don't believe he did. I've had family members that suffer from that disease, you know, in Forks. Not a lot of them, but I've seen people go through that, man, and you just don't go to being diagnosed just for full-blown AIDS and never had HIV. You know what I'm saying? It was too much about that, man. I know one thing in America, we can't put nothing past nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, definitely they, not. Because if, if they want you up out of there, like, I still think, you know, Tupac and Biggie situation, went as far as it did because it's, that, that boy was so politically in his mind where he was going, they probably got rid of them niggas. You know what I mean? They probably tell them, they, know, they know how to get rid of you. You know what I mean? They killed off a whole generation of smart men from Malcolm to Martin to, you know what I mean? You can't put nothing oh, past them. Yeah, they get rid of you, man. They, you got to watch yourself. Yeah. And when you start talking about the Malcolm and the Marks, man, it ain't nothing for them to touch a rapper, dog. It ain't. I mean, they shut they shut the Panthers down. You know what I'm saying? Like, infiltrated us, put crack in our neighborhoods. You know what I mean? Got our parents all fucked up. Mm. Thank God hip-hop came along because we would all been fucked up. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. You know it would have been the real bad times, man. Yeah, oh. Can you imagine with no hip-hop, where a lot of niggas would be right now, man. Man, we would. I know I wouldn't be here. Man, there'd be a whole bunch of people in penitentiary, dog. Yeah. A whole bunch of cats in the graveyard. Be some more dead, a lot of more dead niggas, a mm -hmm. lot of more niggas in the pen, you know. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, it gave, even though, like I said, it still connected uh, niggas with the streets, it gave a lot of niggas an opportunity to change their lives as far as... Uh, Poverty and and the kids and you know being able to be around your children you know we it was a, we grew up a lot of single fathers and shit like that and like you said a lot of dope was introduced and all that shit. so uh, we learned the hard way our generation you know not that our parents didn't learn you know you had slavery and all that shit that our great grandparents and all that had to but going through the gangs. Niggas popping at you and trying to sell dope and mm -hmm. taking penitentiary chances. We had some fucked up shit to go through, too, yeah. that we had to try to make it out of. You feel me? So hip-hop did that for a lot of niggas, man. Oh, man, I'm going to tell you something, man. Professional athletics and music have been the thing for the black community, man. I just want to see a time, man, where we start expanding beyond that, man. Because like I tell everybody, when people talk to me about wanting to do a podcast, I say, why don't you want to become a producer? 
Right. Why don't you want to become a person that want to learn how to work the cameras, how to edit, do other things? There's too many people doing podcasts. The odds of you breaking into that industry, mm-hmm. it's almost like the new record deal, dog. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. The odds are the odds are very slim. As you ran the label, dog. It's hard. It's hard mm-hmm. just to just to come up in something, man, and just make millions of dollars. And I think a lot of times, man, when you in places like Cleveland, Compton, and Watts, because they all the same places, dog, just mm-hmm. different climates. I think it's hard for a kid to see that because a kid see his mom and daddy going to work every day and they still don't got enough. And that's not attractive, but you're looking at the dope man outside and he got the deep dish datings on his man. He got a pocket full of money, man. He just look, he look fresh, dog. Oh, yeah. And you 12 years old. We used to play. That's my car. Exactly. Oh, that's my car. For real. That's my car. That's my car. It influenced, uh, I mean, it influenced a lot of us who felt like we wanted a better situation from what we was in. You feel me? Um, I mean, my my pops worked. You feel me? He worked at General Motors, went to work nine to five or whatever. Moms did the same thing. We we wasn't living in no. You know, we didn't have no Mercedes Benz in the driveway. We had an average car. We didn't live in mother. Uh, uh, Beverly Hills or or Baldwin Hills or even Lakewood for that matter. You get me? Mm-hmm. We lived in Compton. Mm-hmm. Not that Compton was bad because I loved it, but that's what you know we was faced with. You know what I'm saying? When you turn around and you look at the nigga down the street, God damn, this nigga got a brand new mother truck. Right. Mm-hmm. On goddamn Dayton's. Hell yeah. And, and, and wait a minute, the nigga got a low low too? Right. And then wait a minute, the nigga got this too? And he and got the baddest too? broad in the hood. And last, that too? Last summer he was on the bus. Man, like, them niggas got mother. It, you, you look at that and be like, well, shit. You looking at your parents and you know, that's if you, if you had that mother or the hard work mentality and you know, you get what right. you pay, you know, that type of shit. You so you looked at the nigga down the street mm-hmm. who had all this shit, and he was out there on the corner pitching. That was your influence. My yeah. influence wasn't to go punch no motherfucking clock right. like I saw moms and pops slaving. Shit. They was coming home with backs hurting and knees hurting. I'm going to tell you right now, dog. I tell my kids and people, don't misjudge what I'm about to say because you should take your lazy ass to work to provide for your family. But do that while you're building towards a dream. I told all my kids, y'all don't need to think of getting no jobs. Don't go to school just to get no job. Because mm-hmm. a job, it could let you go at any time. That's almost like a sucker bet almost. You work somewhere for all your life, man. And then by the time you, they tell you you can retire, now the retirement age done went up two years every time, every year since I came out of high school. You can't retire until you damn near 67 to 70 now. Mm-hmm. So you think about it, you can from work some up place for all your life, dog, and 70, you come on for a few years and you die. Yeah, no, no. While making another motherfucker rich. Now, he don't provide it for you. You know, you got a paycheck out of that, dog, but I just always aspire for more, man. Right. I always tell people to find you a talent, what you good at. It ain't necessarily got to be that you no rapper, no podcast, no actor, nothing like that, but you could be the nigga that, that clean cars, the detail cars real good, own your own detail shop. Mm-hmm. You can't never fire yourself, my nigga. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, having that Having that mentality is is hard for a young or a young kid who's eleven or twelve coming up in poverty and the struggle. When I'm watching niggas on the block every day, and then I'm seeing police, and I'm seeing niggas get smoked who from my block. It changes your mentality. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You want to strive for you know, something better. But like I tell niggas, you know, as a kid, you all, you have those dreams. You get me? When I was a kid, I didn't think I was going to be no rapper, actor, podcast, motherfucker. You get me? Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to be like any other typical kid. I'm going to be a policeman. I'm going to be a fireman. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a doctor, lawyer, whatever. And then the, the more you see poverty kick in and you like, well, shit. I ain't got no new mother Nike's on and no. moms ain't buying me this. And then especially if your parents split right. and now you got single moms at home and now really it is like low income and shit. your aspects of like, nigga, I ain't finna be no mother 
doctor or a lawyer. Yeah. I'm barely finna make it out the hood. Nigga, niggas down now. the street shooting every night. Mm -hmm. How? Who says I'm finna make it out of here? And then next day, you know, you claim in the hood and then you running in with the police every day. Nigga, I'm like, nigga, I'm gonna be in prison some f way. Yeah, yeah, and I'm gonna tell you who the influences are now. When we was kids, it used to be the dude down the block. You know, that hustle is over with now. That's gone, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what it is now, the rappers that they see on TV, the images that these cats portray. And it's real destructive because a lot of these rappers don't have the money that they claim, especially not the new ones just coming to the game. You living off of advance, bro. Mm -hmm. And that jewelry is more than likely rented or, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's all props, dog. But we project these images, man, to the community, right? It's almost like dangling a steak in front of pit bulls, right? So they the kids want that now, so they go do whatever. And the internet has made it to where any nigga can become famous. Mm -hmm. Or at least get five minutes of fame for a minute. He can get attention, right? Mm -hmm. So you got some people, man, that's willing to do whatever they have to do to get attention. If, that, if they got to go in there and tell a lie about you or him or me or whoever, I look they at all these, go do it. I look at all these people now on the internet. I was just saying this myself the other day. Will do anything to just be somebody Same. nowadays. Mm -hmm. You get me? You see everybody going, uh, what do they call themselves now? Content creators. Content creators and like, what the f is that? Right. And then half the mother f who call themselves content creators ain't doing nothing but walking around showing themselves. Doing goofy and shit. shit. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, my f will do anything today. Or to telling be lies about somebody else. Telling lies, nigga, I'm going to eat some. I'm going to wear some sh I'm going to get on. He like, there's so many people that just get on the internet and just act fools and for attention. You get me? Like, man, I'm, 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 a I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a film me and my husband in the bathroom getting dressed and pulling pranks on each other. Hey, I saw, I like, saw a broad, not to cut you off, dog, but I saw a broad, man. They said this chick make a million dollars a month letting niggas watch her sleep. It just like like everybody wants to be like. I ain't mad at that though, dog. I no, wish everybody to wants to be famous know. today, man, or be somebody like you. You don't have you don't hear too many motherfuckers like, oh, I want to become a, a a teacher or an educator, or I want to become a motherfucking lawyer, or I want to be. Everybody wants to be a YouTube content creating sensation nowadays well, you get me i think i think man i think it's just it's it everything changed like because i think back when i was a, a kid aspiring to be a rapper you know what i mean like today it seemed like the main primary reason why niggas want to rap is to be famous. Oh, yeah, for it's, sure. It's to be seen. Even more than get the money to move the mama out the house to, you know, mm -hmm. to take care of the family. It's like niggas just need to be seen more. Like, when I was growing up, it was like, okay, I want to be the best rapper. You want to have skills. You want to be able to tell stories. You know what I'm saying? Like, you want to, like, being a rapper was... It was being somebody. It was like it was like a tool that got you out of the hood. Now, like you know, we wanted to, we wanted to rap to get out to take care of moms to to get out the mother hood. Period. Now niggas want to rap and go straight back to the hood. You know what I mean? It's like or they put on for the hood. You know what I'm saying? Like it ain't it's it's not a real purpose in being an entertainer no more. It's like. Like you said, they just want to be seen. You know, yeah, everything. Like, Still, as a kid, what did you inspire to be? Man, as you, a kid, you know what, bro? Like, I'm, I'm sure it wasn't like I'm gonna be producing hip hop records or I'm gonna be a podcaster. Oh no, what, not what, at what, all. What did man. you inspire to be as a child? You know what I wanted to be when I was a little kid, man. I used to be able to draw really good. Okay. I wanted to do cartoons when I was a little kid. I, I really wanted to do. I, I wanted to do that all the way up into college until I saw how much, especially the technology, wasn't like it is today. Right. You know, in order for you to get into cartoon work, man, you had to go to four or five different schools. Like when you get your bags through it, you got to go over here and learn something. You might have to fly over here to China or Japan for a year and learn to do this, depending on what you wanted to do. You know what I mean? But I, I wanted to really be an artist, dog. I always, like, lean toward the arts. You know what I mean? But 
I never had, even though I played football, I never really had aspirations on being a professional athlete, so to speak. I just always, especially back then, because believe it or not, football players just getting to where they making good money. Back then, when I was coming out, I think the league minimum was 100000 a year. I knew motherfuckers that were getting jobs that was better than that. And I always thought about the, the financial aspect. My knees was hurting and back hurting all the time. I was like, man, for 100000 man, I ain't going out there getting whacked on for $100,000. They got me fucked up. He wasn't ready for the trenches still. Oh, no, man. And, and I was really good. I was I want, good. I wanted to play baseball, man. I wanted to play baseball like nine, eight. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm -hmm. I want. I wanted to be. A, I wanted to be Michael Jackson. Okay. You know what I'm saying. I wanted to be him. Um. Then I wanted to be LL Cool J. You know what I mean. And then when I start getting like, you know, I really start selling dope, and I caught a couple cases. I wanted to be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. So, you know, life dealt me what it dealt me. But I did aspire to do other things besides music. You know, sports. Music, I aspired for that, but I knew if if all that would have failed, I probably would have became an attorney or something. It's I like the, it's like the youth now, like they in, like you said, I don't be a rapper, nigga. I don't Nothing artist, else. fucking baseball player, fucking you know what I'm saying. I want to be a rapper. I think that is why when I had my son. I pushed for something else. Yeah, you, because yeah. I already knew that rap bug gonna hit him. Mm -hmm. You, especially with the artists that they have today in his generation and the youth, and you know, you got the 18, 19 year old motherfuckers who riding around in the Rolls Royces and all this shit. Mm -hmm. That was gonna influence him if he saw that shit every day. And the key TV. is that's real, man. So automatically, it was like, nah, nigga, we getting outside. You nigga, from from the age of three years old until I could stick it in your brain, you get right. me? It's going to be something else besides. And he used to detour a little bit. Hey, Dad, you think I can, and how do you do this? And how do you do this? work the microphone? Because I used to have my equipment set up. Mm -hmm. How do you work the microphone? Nigga, I took all that shit down. Because I didn't want him to get influenced by... This shit that I know is a fucking headache, and it's a roller coaster. You get me? Man, every cat I know, man, that's in the business, man, in any part, they discourage their kids. My son, man, he played professional football, right? But it seemed like he more interested in going into the music industry than he. I'm like, nigga, you playing professional football? Leave that stuff alone, man. And I finally told him, if you go work in the industry, you go get a real job. So I hooked him up with my boy that was up in the Universal Building. I said, you not doing all this, trying to go develop an artist and find him. You mess around and lose every penny you got, man. Exactly. You fuck around. It's, it's, it's hard, man. It's not no guarantees. Yeah, I pulled my kids into this shit early. That, But that was me out here thriving, having mm -hmm. him so young. You know what I'm saying? Out here thriving, doing, having him everywhere I was. So... You know, now my oldest son, like my younger sons, they want it. They love this shit. You know, my older son, he want it. They love it too. But he was around it so much as a kid that he shy away from it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And like mm -hmm. now, you know, he do his trading and, you know, different things that he do educate himself. Like, right. mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I think when you put him in there too young, they going to kind of bag up from it. Anyway, it'll burn you. It'll burn you out, especially with the transition of how shit go in the day. Mm -hmm. That's why I say, um, as as a kid, you got to have some, you know, some other solid inspirations. You know what I'm saying? To want to become, you know what I'm saying? And no, no disrespect to the talent and people who you know chasing that dream. I just feel like with the way it is right now, like I said. Uh, Kids should be inspired to to become something other than the next hip hop star or the next whatever. You know what I'm saying? Uh, right. Get you some kind of education to where when this shit starts nagging you, you got something else to fall back on besides trying to be the next. Oh well, shit! I gotta be a content creator, or I gotta I gotta start a OnlyFans, or I gotta you know. Well, from what I see today, bro. My only problem is that if now if a kid got talent, man, if a kid is talented, and a lot of times the apple do fall for, for don't fall far from the tree. You know, sometimes if a nigga he don't been seeing his 
daddy rap since he's been in the crib, he go more than likely possess some kind of lyrical tenacity. You feel what I'm saying? But at the same time... Is he going to have the same success? Is he, have, is he going to have the same success? And now today to become a rapper, dog, it's about everything that's outside of music that's going to actually get a motherfucker to invest some money into you. So now you got the girls that's out there doing whatever. Mm-hmm. They just doing whatever. They trying to outdo each other. They saying the craziest stuff ever on records now. And I, don't, I know we've been on that lately, so I don't want to go back on that tyrant. But it just seemed like to me today almost, it's like these little niggas aspire to almost go to prison, my nigga. It's like they get on like you see a cat like Young Thug that's making all the money he was making. Mm-hmm. Now he in this situation, man, where this man might be in jail for the rest of his life. It's like, okay, so you struggled to get here only to go back to here to become worse, my nigga? So I I believe I believe that I believe that the uh the artists, you know what I'm saying, like these days the artists is uh it's changed. Talent alone ain't just gonna get it. You can be the dopest nigga, you know what I mean? It's probably ten it was probably ten Jordans on the playground. But why did only one make it? Because he knew he understood his books. He knew what his schooling, you know. I'm so now I feel like you have to have a business, some type of business degree, if you're gonna be a rapper. Mm. So you know what I'm saying you need to take accounting. You know what I'm saying like all these a rapper now it ain't just us putting words on paper. You got to run a whole full business. Oh, for sure. So you just coming to the mic because you can spit. That don't mean nothing. Everybody rap. So, but can you manage your career? You know what I'm saying like. I manage myself. I've been managing myself, but I've been reading my own contracts. You got to understand the wearing tools, the foreign widths, and the hearing tools in your contracts. Mm -hmm. And you got to be able to dissect your contract. Okay, you like your clothes, your brand. Now Now a rapper is a brand. You know what I'm saying? So how do you manage that brand if you can't, if you don't understand the different aspects of your shows, of of your your lawyers, if you don't know how to deal with every aspect of your business, then you're not going to make it in this. You might get a one-hit song, but you ain't going to last. So. And even if you do have attained some kind of success, you going to be, everything going to be gone by the time you're done. You ain't going to have no money. Because if you don't have a team, you know what I'm saying? Like people if you, take if advantage. You don't know, if you don't know it, that team will rob the shit out you. Oh, for yeah. sure, hundred you know percent. This man right here yeah. is the primary example of that. Oh, yeah, I've been exactly. robbed. I've been shook down to my socks. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm I'm really speaking from experience. You know what I mean? Like, had it all. Came in first check, eighty thousand dollars. Blew that. You know what I mean? When did <laughs> shit? That wasn't. That was easy to blow. Right. You know what I'm saying, but we all did that because we had. You know, but. Over time, I learned this, but now I feel like if an artist, like when I'm looking at artists, like I know a couple of dope ass niggas, get on the mic and kill it. Dumb as rocks, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, you going, you going straight to jail. Mm-hmm. I'm not finna, you a liability. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's how, you know, if somebody gonna put some money behind you, they need to see other than you just rapping. They need to know that. You know, you, you wise enough to control whatever that investment is. You know, yeah, what that's saying? real shit. Uh, let me ask you this, bro. Coming from the place we come from, man, y'all established Mo Thug Records, man, and y'all put a lot of people from the city on. Mm-hmm. You know, how many people was mad at you that you didn't put them on? Because you can't, you can't put the whole neighborhood on. I mean. Niggas was mad, period. You know what I'm saying? Even even, even the, the ones, ones you got, even the ones put I put on. Put on. Mm-hmm. Ain't that something? Oh, put, put a couple of Probably was the worst. Thousands of dollars in their pockets, you know, and then they mismanaged their money and do they, you know, spent their shit how they spent it. But now and now, you know, you try you try to do something helpful and here it is. It, it's a hindrance to you because you done put an uneducated person on that went and blew their shit. And now it's your fault. And the, and they don't understand they have to pay that money back you initially gave them. Right, yeah, they exactly. They, they, and a lot of a lot of them records y'all was putting out, man, was going gold and platinum because you, they, it featured gold and platinum people right. prominently on them albums. Right. Y'all really got behind them artists. Y'all just didn't throw them out there. Y'all was on every record damn there. Yeah, I mean, one-way bus tickets from Cleveland, Ohio out here, living homeless out here, you know what I mean? That was the sacrifice. 
You know what I mean? Like, niggas didn't understand that we made that sacrifice for them. Right. You know what I mean? A three-day bus ride not knowing what you're going to eat or who you're going to stay or what, you know what I'm saying? All, that was scary. That was just, They didn't have to do that. I opened the door and let them in. You know what I'm saying? Like a couple of my artists still thriving off what they got from me. A couple of my artists still blaming me for what they didn't do right 20 years ago. You know what I mean? But you got to look at the man in the mirror. I mismanaged my money. I ain't blame nobody. I just got back on my shit and be, uh, became quiet and went and studied. You know what I mean? Because I ain't want to be the nigga on, but what happened to you, dog? <laughs> you used to be the man. I ain't want to be that nigga. You know what I'm saying? So I had to learn for myself. So these artists, you put these artists on, a lot of times it don't be worth it because if you're not a well-rounded individual, you're not going to sustain this shit. And sometimes it ain't fun to put on people mm. who are going to blame you. Definitely. Oh, dog. Man, I'm a I was just saying that everybody's not probably going to be as successful as you know. I mean, not to mean that we're not going to work and try and do what we got to do, but let's it's face just it. law averages, dog. Everybody ain't going to make it. You might not sell 10 million albums. You right. might not sell 1 million albums. Right. Your shit might come out and might do 60,000 copies. Right. People work mysteriously like that when they come to music. You know what I'm saying? I could like this motherfucker and not like that motherfucker. No disrespect, you get me? But I don't like that shit as much as I like this. So that's just that's just people's flavor, man. And and it's unfortunate that you know you might consider a motherfucker the friend or the homie that you trying to put on because you believe in their talent and but I can't make a motherfucker buy your record, man. Right. You get me? I can only talk to the radio so much and be right. like, hey, man, play this for me. Play this for me. But at the end of the day, cost effective. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I can't do for you what Easy and Ruthless did for me. Right. You get me? As I'm going to try, you get me? That's my whole intent. But let's face it. This this rap game, man, is that's why I say, man, I did not want to encourage my son to go into this shit. Who says you're gonna have the success I did? Right. You get, I'd be love it if you was able to shit. If you was able to climb up over me, right. I'd be very proud. Like, okay, mm -hmm. good. Great. You know what I'm saying? All the hard work and determination paying off. Good, great. But then what happens when you put a motherfucker record out and he sell 20 copies? Right. You get me? Which could very well happen with this streaming shit. I don't understand how that work anyway, but going back to your going back to your, you know, contract stuff and everything, um, a lot of artists say they first deal was unfair. I agree with that in some ways, but then in some ways I don't because somebody has invested some money in you because mm -hmm. they don't usually come back and say nothing about the dudes that fail. Right. Most acts that record companies sign are failures. I think it's something only maybe one out of every five actually work out. You know what I mean? They got more failures in the building, so they kind of got to overtax the one that does, that do make it. Now, usually after you sacrifice that first album kind of, Mm -hmm. And you sell some records, you start getting a lot more leverage. Mm -hmm. But now you're a bankable artist, right? Mm -hmm. Did y'all, you guys, I assume y'all contract situation after y'all put out East 1999 Eternal, I'm pretty sure they went back to the drawing board with y'all and figured out some other shit, huh? We went back to the drawing board as soon as I heard Platinum. Mm -hmm. Like, I was on that. You know what I mean? Because our deal wasn't the greatest. But, you know, back then, whose deal was? Hell, nobody's. He, 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 he was like... I'm going to give y'all a better deal than the dog pound. He like, they getting eight points. I'm like, what the fuck is a point? Yes, 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 yes. You <laughs> cover, like, you cover from where I'm coming from, lazy. Like, what the fuck is a point? Like, like, nigga, how much is that in dollar size? You know I don't know what the fuck like a point a, is. Like a point. Like, he like, I'm going to give y'all 12 points. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm trying to figure out what this point is. So I'm like, okay, 12% of 100 yeah, that shit wasn't cool, but he put the money up. He put the videos up, and I had to explain to my niggas, like, man, we need to get in the door because I already knew because I, I had a situation in Cleveland that we had uh, I had got fucked in the contract because 
uh, first album we did was called Faces of Death. It was a Cleveland local project. Yeah, through the dude that owned Dow's Rap at Record Dow, Creations. Herman Henderson. Mm-hmm. Slew foot fuck face bitch ass. <laughs> you know we, what I mean? He, he we, did. Uh, man, why do we all got one of them, man? <laughs> nigga, he got one. He got one. He is this unknown. I was, I, was I, don't. I was 16, you know what I'm saying? So I'm thinking I'm getting a record deal. Mm-hmm. This nigga signed us to a management deal. We get him a whole album. I still, I could still sue this dude to this day, but it ain't worth it because I don't like the, the karma. He got to deal with that. But... You know, he, as a kid, I was already tricked. So I already knew when we got to E, like I knew what a re- renegotiation was. So I'm like, soon as, we, and then when I heard we was platinum, boom. So we went from a 16, a 12 point deal to a 16 point deal. From a 16 to a 18, from an 18 to a 22. By the time we left Ruthless, we was 50 50 with them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, it worked out for me. Busy didn't see it the same way I saw it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The rest of us saw it like, okay, we 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 establishing some. Now we built some. Now you know, and we was cut from that easy e cloth. So it was like it was the doors that was open for us was unlimited. You know what I mean? So that was the reason why we went in and. We was we signed the first contracts because you got to get in the door, man. Once you get past Definitely. the gate, the gatekeepers, mm-hmm. then you can probably you know you can construct your world the way yeah you see, you see fit. fit you know? Now y'all having so many people in the group, man. How hard was that negotiating, man? Because you pretty much got to have everybody in the greens for it to be popping, right? Right. So you know we we used to have this thing called uh, majority rule. It's five of us, you know what I'm saying? So if three niggas was down, then the other two had to roll. Mm. We lost that along the way, you know what I'm saying? Because when once everybody got money, it was like, now I'm going to do what I want to do. You know what I mean? But in the beginning, our, our little democracy was we going to vote. If it's three to two, mm. you know what I mean? The and majority that, and that, wins. The majority, the majority rule. And that's how we was able to keep going without standing there and just, you know, and um, fighting, fighting, fighting and being stagnant. We didn't have to become stagnant because we had an uneven number in our group, you know what I mean? So it always kept the ball rolling. That worked, man. It would have been cool if y'all could have saw that, man, because I'm not going to lie, and I ain't saying this is no Cleveland stand, but when I first saw y'all, man, I listened to a lot of hip-hop music. I know hip-hop inside and out, you know, and I'm a fan first, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I really felt like y'all was so unique, man, and wasn't nobody like y'all. I really said, man, these dudes go fuck around and be like the fucking Beatles of hip-hop, dog. Mm-hmm. I really saw that, man, and um, I think, man, somewhere along the way, man, like you said, the inconsistencies started kind of coming in. You know, like I would see some crazy records that just didn't make sense. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, okay, this dude over here doing these records with this dude. And I'd be like, man, them motherfuckers is too big for that, man. Where do you think that, like, why is it so hard to keep that cohesiveness? I mean, you know what I mean? Because, man, when money come into play, man, niggas just... It's always that, man. You know what I'm it's saying? always like, that. Because in the beginning... You know what I mean? It was like our shit was more controlled. Like I worked at KFC. I sold dope. I went to school. I set up our talent shows. I did a lot of that stuff. You know what I mean? Like so we didn't have a lot of money, but a lot of that money came from me. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, all right, so we got to get outfits. Boom, boom, boom. We do, you know, a lot of my contribution was to keep the group going, but Shit, like I said, our first check a piece was eighty thousand. Shh, that nigga busy was with us in Cleveland for a couple years. He hated Columbus. You know what I mean? That nigga got that check, nigga. That nigga was out. <laughs> that nigga went straight to Columbus. We like, where's this? Well, you know what I'm saying? But that's what money do. It give you power to do. You don't have to listen. We don't have to sit down and mastermind mm-hmm. together. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got my own ideas. And then you got other people 
that got ideas that didn't have nothing to do with the original idea. Now you over here with two people in your ear. I got three in mine, and and that's when the wedges start coming in. Mm. You know what I mean? But us being family, you know what I mean? We kind of leaned on each other. That's why we still here today. We was more family orientated, you know what I mean? So when the wedges came down, one of us always knew like, oh, we gotta pull it back together. So if it if it wasn't me, it was it was flesh. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't flesh, it was big wish. Like fuck that, we family, you know what I'm saying? So if our family aspect, our parents knowing each other and mm-hmm. growing up in the Glenville area together and knowing each other is what helped us stand the test of time. Uh, that's a good thing is I still see y'all touring, man. And like, that's one thing, man, that I always tell artists, y'all might not have had the best contract that first album, dog, but look at what y'all doing now, man. It's, what, it's 30 years later, man? Yeah, we free agents too, you 30. know what I'm saying? So when we put out something now, <laughs> it's like all that, all that come home. Exactly. You know yeah, saying? y'all about to get the masters back too, huh? The masters come back year thirty, man, and you know it's gonna be a beautiful thing. So we got, you know, the masters starting to revert back. Ain't that crazy. Mm-hmm. How some shit that we wrote and we did thirty years. It take us thirty years to own our own shit. And we made this shit. Like, damn it, I sat up all night getting high, drinking 40 ounces, right. trying to come up with motherfucking shit to write about, and a nigga just took my shit. Right. Like, nigga, that's, that's mine. And they still don't want to give it back. No. It's yeah, you like, got to go to court like, for that. Oh, yeah. yeah, you got to go you gotta get, get it. You got to get a lawyer and go get it. Because go they'll just it. keep selling it and keep flipping mm-hmm. it and going, yeah, it's 30 years later, oh, what? And they'll keep collecting the money. No, after um, I know after Easy died, man, was it a little hard, man? Because see, it's one thing when you're dealing with a cat that you like and stuff may not be all the way right, but that nigga gave you an opportunity. Exactly. And then somebody else come in and take over. Was it a lot of little dissension as far as dealing with Tamika? I mean, it was like, you know, uh, I said like this. So when we was working with Easy e when he was alive, he just put us in the studio and said, y'all niggas, Give me, give me an album. He didn't over like look over our shoulder. Or I want us, I want another crossroads. You know, all that shit hadn't happened yet. So he let us do whatever we want. He let us be us, and we came with our shit. By the time Tamika and and uh, and Ron Sweeney, Ron Sweeney. and all, all them other players came into play, when that happened, it was like. They was looking for something, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like Tamika wanted to tell us how to do our record or which record to do, you know what I mean? Like, and we didn't have that, so we had 100% freedom when he was alive, and then when he wasn't, we had people trying to tell us how to do our shit. Well, we need another Crossroads or something to sound like. So we, okay, we did Crossroads. Boom, now we're going to get y'all changed the world. And now we're going to get y'all if I could teach. So, you know, if, if you look at our songs, it's like seven, eight, them kind of songs of each type kind of song. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because motherfuckers was looking for the next Instead of just letting us Instead just, of just cre- letting yeah. us create and come up with our own. Right now, y'all telling us, "Oh, y'all got to do another Crossroads," or yeah. you got to give us another hit single. Yeah, yeah. once you like, say you didn't know Crossroads was gonna be a hit, so why are we chasing that? You know yeah, and saying? if you was being left to your own devices, the first project, I'd just let y'all keep doing. I'd have said, obviously, they know what they're doing. Let's leave exactly. them alone. Yeah, he, that's what he did. He was like, "Okay, I'm gonna get y'all niggas some producers." He put us in the studio with. Uh, Rhythm D and um, DJ Unique, DJ Unique, Tony C, um, all these guys, you know what I'm saying? Dre Ghost, we was all in the studio with, and he would go handle business. You know, he'd be out there, or he had he had his office set up over here. All the white people coming in and out. He ain't, but he ain't mess with us. He like, what y'all? Let me hear what y'all did. And we'll play it for him and he'll like it or not like it. You know what I'm saying? But most of the time he liked it. He was hip hop. Y'all write me a verse. No, you're going to write your own shit, E. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause, and he and he really started, like, he was, he was finna be a bone member, man. 
Is that right? On everything. You see the you see the braids to the back, man. Mm-hmm. You see before he left Earth, man, he was mm-hmm. that nigga was braided up, you know, still in the same Pendleton, buttoned up hot as hell, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it wasn't the curl wasn't the curl was going slowly fading out. Mm-hmm. I mean, that nigga was a that was E bone. That would have been hard, dog. That would have been dope. It was it, it was it was happening, man. Like all that shit happened so fast. Did it seem surreal, bro? Because sometimes, even some like sometimes, I've had like my own incredible moments in life, to where sometimes I just like to slow it down and embrace the moment. Because I'd be like, man, this shit really happening for me. Right. Like right now, was it one of those type of moments with him, with you? I mean, yeah. I mean, we. We got out to California November 23rd. We left November 23rd, 1993. Our first shit came out June 24th, 1994. So we didn't hook up with Easy e until after, until like February. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So February, March, April, May, we recorded that all about 15 songs. He put that shit out. He took his album. He was finna put his album out. And if he hadn't have did that, we wouldn't have never came out. He stopped his album, put our shit out. And that was 94. He died in 95, so we only knew E a little over a year. Wow. It changed your life that quick. That quick. And was unselfish about it because he said, he took, he, I'm not going to put my album out. He was a major artist at yeah. that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then and he had some shit because he was finna. He wanted to bomb. He was coming on. He 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 had it for the the dog pound. He was coming for them niggas, but he saw our talent though. This this for me was solidify him as an executive visionary. Right. That nigga stopped what he was doing and was like, "I'm gonna put these guys out." That's as the an difference. Executive, That's you know? the difference between a a. a a rap executive and a nigga who know the vision. Vision. Like, it ain't about me being here. Right. These niggas is going to surpass me. Right. You get me? But I need to go there right now. I'm thinking like an executive. Because a normal nigga in that Smart. position yeah. would be like, man, I'm going to put my record out first. Especially yeah, since he don't been gold. you got a gang of them. Right. You got a gang of niggas who call themselves executives, but then they don't think like that. Right. That's why the careers and the successes of their artists don't climb past the motherfucking anthill mm-hmm. because they don't see the vision of going, man, these niggas is finna be way larger than I, you get me? Right. So let me stop my shit and let's shoot they shit right here. That that was smart, you get me? But like you said, he was a real executive and right. shit, you feel yeah. me? He learned that from being a street hustler, you feel me? Like I know what, I know what works and not gonna work. I'm not gonna waste my time with this sack when I know I can get bigger money over right. here. You so feel me? He putting out NWA, but still got the the wherewithal to put out JJ Fad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know exactly. What I'm so yeah, he was, JJ Fad was his first platinum album, I believe, wasn't it? Man, I mean, he had all he the nigga had a uh, group called At Band Clan with Will I Am when we first came out here. So he had this nigga had all kind of weird artists like mm-hmm. <laughs> he was really like. He was on. He he was he was that. I wanted to be that. Like you yeah, know what I mean? I'm, I'm gonna be. A, I'm be. A, I'm I'm a real record fucking label. Yeah, you I get wanted me? to be like yeah. E man. Like that's what I wanted to be. Cause y'all was the most important group at that label at that time. Because you got to remember, Dre had left, mm-hmm. and they was over there doing their thing. When you know Death Row came, they was smashing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They was smashing. Everything they was dropping was solid, right? And he dropped y'all, and y'all was that mega time bomb. It was like. Yeah, that for the love of money was killer. You know what I'm saying? That when that was like, I was like this, and you know, I was around here cheesing like a motherfucker. You know, every time a Cleveland nigga do something yes, good, nigga. I'm like, yeah, That's y'all niggas, see, don't start trying to bite right. the army swag either, right. nigga. And they from the motherfucking part section of the town I'm from too, nigga. It's home. Right. You was watching Drew Carey, man. Stop playing. I fuck with Drew Carey. Shout out to the homie Drew Carey. The Cleveland nigga. Another Cleveland nigga. Drew Carey on the east side, too. Hell yeah. He just downtown. Hell yeah. Drew Carey used to hustle. Me and Drew Carey used to hustle together. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Drew Carey had a sack. He probably call was. Nigga tell him put, call that nigga tell him to put you on the prices right there, nigga. Shit, you trying to get on and get yeah, some prizes. Shit. Drew Carey sold me my first zone. Let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop. He fronted me my first zone. You know what I mean? <laughs> 
But man, you know what, dog? The thing is, when y'all came out, man, the thing I like too is that y'all didn't get too heavily invested in the. It was all about music, because mm -hmm. at that time, Ruthless was firing back with music. But when Easy did drop his shit, it was impactful. Mm -hmm. I know we we. And I can speak on like even coming from the West Coast, we bang some, we bang some bone. Even like the the thuggish ruggish man, we banged all y'all shit mm -hmm. from the beginning. So mm -hmm. it was just it was it was just different. I it mean, was different. Saying, as far as hip hop was concerned. You know, you had an East Coast shit, and then you know the West Coast. We had our shit, but it was it was something different. Man. And then I'm gonna tell you some. I'm gonna tell you, and no offense, because some of y'all niggas are my homies. But when something new comes, here come the slew of poor man imitations. It was like a bunch of fake bone groups that came out after that, man. Everybody just thought it was about, and we were so cold. Some of them dudes was just mumbling. They didn't have the, the cadency right. You know what I'm saying? They wasn't incorporating the melodies and stuff. They was just on there pretty much. You know? I'm glad, I'm glad you said that, though, because it's like, and then, and then I really recognize the pattern of how the industry do you. You know what I mean? Like, but I recognize it watching Lil Wayne though, because oh, yeah. like when Lil Wayne hit, bam, that nigga blew up like by itself. It was they were everybody had to sound like Lil Wayne. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But that's how they did Bone. But I was in it. Right. I really couldn't. I couldn't step out and see what was going on. Oh, well, it got, it got real at, corny for a minute, dog. I had, I had to look in hindsight. You know what I mean? Like, but yeah, niggas like a thousand niggas. Like every record label. Like yeah, when Easy one time. when Easy E died, man. Everybody tried to steal Bone Thugs and Harmony from Ruthless Records. We was just loyal, you know what yeah, I mean? Who, who was the one? I know it was somebody that had to check the heads, y'all, like man, thinking, like, man, man we, we, it was only seven majors. I've been at, I've been at every last one of them, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they came in, they beating out, beating our door down for Bone Thugs and Harmony. That's how I got to deal with Def Jam for Flesh and Bone, mm -hmm. cause he wasn't signed in the group, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then that's how I was able to parlay the Mo Thugs shit at Relativity. Because mm -hmm. they wanted that Bone Thugs and Harmony sound. You know what I mean? Like that. Uh, now, we talking about influencing and, and the contributions that was made to this, mm -hmm. to this thing we love. Mm -hmm. We number 21 on the Billboard group list, right? Mm -hmm. Fuck out of here. Everybody got their hair braided. Everybody changed their rap flow from Mariah Carey to Busta Rhymes to name them. Mm -hmm. Everybody put a little flow. You not not everybody, but most of like. But the contribute. What I'm trying to say is the contribution, the overall influence, the impact that we brought to the table. Mm -hmm. The whole industry tried to come behind. We had to fight the whole industry just to not be drowned out by them bringing imitators to the table. And some of y'all brought to the game, I don't know if you know this, but like I said, I study this stuff, right? Since y'all came, man, it's like the generation that raised, was raised off of y'all that might have been little babies and stuff, mm -hmm. like y'all was almost like the Curtis Mayfields that came in, right? Mm-hmm. A bunch of kids don't grow up listening to y'all. Now everybody rapping with melodies now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody is rapping with a melody now. You almost can't be a rapper now. That's why it's important for rappers like Scarlett to blow up and the, what's the one girl, the big topic girl from Cleveland? Mm -hmm. Because they bring that straight edge back to it like I'm just rapping. I don't got no melodies in my stuff. But everything since then has almost been like a bone knockoff, dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that was our contribution, like, we used to, I used to be mad. I used to look at those lists like, man, they don't give us our props, but it really don't even matter no more no. because, you know, we know. Like, just to look, if I turn on the radio and be like, no, I had something to do, just to just to know, like, the West, the way the West, the way N.W.A. and y'all influenced the game with gangster rap music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's how I feel like our melodies had a, a impact like 
to that degree. You know, when what I hear saying? a gang of niggas saying "jail" on records, you yeah, get yeah. me. You yeah. feel me? All yeah. day. I, I don't. Know, look, I don't look at it as, mm-hmm. damn man, all these famous ass mega motherfuckers be saying "jail," and not one nigga will come out and say, "I ain't gonna lie." First person I ever heard say that was eight. You know, mm-hmm. niggas be like, "Oh shit!" I just started saying it. You get me? Yeah, for sure. I don't, don't look at it as. I just be like, you know, some. I know where it started from. Right. I mean, and if niggas, if you look back and check the history, from from eighty seven on, I was. You know what I'm saying? So everybody came after that was influenced by it. And if you was influenced by it, cool. I'm. Hey, I'm glad we, you use it. We we said that shit, nigga. Like, yeah. <laughs> but we knew where it, we knew it's where a, it came from. Some people, you know what some people <laughs> like. Oh yeah, I know, nigga. That's MC Eight all day. Yeah. And then there's some dudes who be like. That's my I don't shit. say nothing about it. Like, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it is what it yeah. is, man. And I don't want to sound like I'm dissing nobody, so please don't nobody take because I think brothers do what they got to do to get opportunities. And these labels, they saw y'all was successful, so obviously it was like we need to find we need to find us Bone Thugs and Harmony because I know at one time it was a prominent Southern rap label that had people on the streets looking for for Bone Sound the likes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't want to, you know, talk about it, but it was, I mean, a, it that, was a, they was literally going to street. Copy, yeah. they go copy what's popular. Mm-hmm. I, I want to ride what's popular. Just, Movies do it all day. You see a nigga make a movie about Vietnam. How many movies, different companies that made movies about Vietnam or spaceships or fucking the president getting killed or whatever? Everybody wants something that's popular, though. Exactly. If it works, shit, I'm gonna gonna ride ride the motherfucking wave. That's how they do it. That's the ways of the world. That's a fad. That's a motherfucking, that's what you call a copycat. Shit. Flat out. What's funny about Bone, man, is y'all all all got y'all different personalities, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm cool with Cray. Cray, you know, Cray the Hum, but Cray is real reserved. Mm hmm. He's a quiet dude. You always seemed like you was a nigga that was out in traffic. I said, that's a nigga that be out in traffic, probably wiggling with everybody, yeah, right? I'm, I'm making plays all Yeah, time. like, you the one, you the wiggling. Wish seemed like he kind of like the goon. Yeah, he, yeah. The you know, he, he, at arm. You know he, he, the, he the goon. He the no-nonsense nigga that the fire on the nigga. You know what I mean? He ain't going to play with it. Flesh seemed like he don't play no type of games. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a certain structure there. But Busy is the wild card. He's the nigga that's going to... Start a fight somewhere he ain't supposed to start a fight at and go talk some shit to say some shit he ain't supposed to say. I was at the verses, right? I didn't go to the thing, though. I didn't go to the actual verses. I was at the hotel. I actually had it because I'm, I'm cool with my, my, one of my homeboys. Um, shout out to Uncle Beats, down with 3-6, right? Mm. Do a lot of shit with 3-6. So I was up there fucking with Crunchy Black. Uncle Beast, that's my dog. That's, that's your boy? Yeah. That's my nigga right there. You know, shout out to Boo. I was kicking it with, mm-hmm. you know, Lola yep. and the other homie. And um, we was up there talking. They said, why you over here still? You a Cleveland nigga. You came to get some intel for your bone people? Because we about to smash them. And they had all kind of niggas running through the hotel. I never felt like a little kid again, dog. But when the homies eight ball MJG came through that motherfucker, Mm. And you know that nigga MJG, he almost, you remember that old school movie Willie Dynamite, how that nigga walked down the stairs of that courthouse? Mm -hmm. That nigga MJG don't touch the ground when he walk. He really Uh like a pimp. He really in character all the time. You know, Mm -hmm. he come in there, he got two white girls in his arm. He skip up in that motherfucker. I'm like, oh shit, they don't bought MJG. And I said, y'all niggas just got to pull the cheat code out for all the Cleveland niggas. They will come by themselves. But then y'all came with some surprises. Did you think it was going to be one of the moments, man, when Busy tripped out up there? I mean, you always got to expect something to happen, you know what I mean? Just like with that whole sit- Bone Thugs and Harmony and 3-6 Mafia, the, the history is so rich and the feud was so real, you know what I mean? Like, I, we had to expect something, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But Busy Bone, you know what I mean? That's that's Busy Bone. You never know. That, you know he going to say something, something going to... He, it he might said, I ain't just get allow cracked. Your ugly motherfuckers to keep playing with me. <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember Boo going, Busy, you a hater. You a hater, Busy. Yeah, rest in peace to Boo. Yeah, bro. rest in peace to Boo. Lola was, was on, he a bro, hater? Man. Was he a hater because they was ugly or what? 
because he said y'all some ugly. Oh, no, I just think that's so what you call a motherfucker when you get a lost word. <laughs> that shit was funny as a motherfucker. <laughs> Our joke by, backstage was like, these ugly motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. And this she nigga said, blurted said, that shit out. The comeback was, was, you a hater. A nigga say, you a ugly motherfucker. Yo, you just a but hater. The shit was so funny because it seemed like it came from out of nowhere because you didn't even know if Busy was playing at first, but then he was like, he was serious than a motherfucker. Yeah, no, I mean. That nigga is passionate. Yeah, I mean, it 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 was the words that was exchanged went too far, you know what I'm saying? What the nigga um Juicy J has said was inappropriate cuz we don't play that suck my dick shit. You yeah, know that's what he is. That shit crazy like, huh? When men say that to me and nigga, that's, oh, yeah. that's always a, a, going a, a where nigga, I'm from. A nigga, yeah, you know I mean? that's so, the thing. Where this man from too, a nigga invite me to his dick, dog. I might put my steel yeah, on his ass. And, yeah, yeah. And, and that's why that got out of hand like that. You know what I mean? But, you know what I mean? Just, and, and I want to add, you know, we talked to them. We, we probably about to go on tour. We was about to go on tour with them right after that until Boo passed, you know what I mean? So Yeah, rest in peace, Boo. They was they was working on that. So, you know what I mean? Like all that shit get squashed, man, misunderstandings, heat of the moment, mm-hmm. all that t- t- testosterone, all that talent, all that v- uh v- bravado up there, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you gotta expect something to happen, man. It just goes down like that sometimes, man. The one thing I love about y'all niggas though, it's no matter right or wrong. Y'all always unified up in that motherfucker. Like, you know what I'm saying? I said, man, they probably gonna cuss that nigga out on the way home, but they go ride with him. That's how it's supposed to be. Because yeah. everybody got that one homeboy that's gonna act up. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. But you gotta ride with him because y'all don't been fan- y'all family. I mean, you know what I'm saying? the thing about it is he ours. You know what I'm saying? So y'all can't touch him. That's real shit Flat right Flat out. For sure. That's real shit. Now, let me ask you this, bro. And you ain't got to say no names, man, but did you ever see one of them fake bone groups and just laugh, man, and just say this is the worst shit ever? Like, what's the worst copy cop? What's the worst knockoff you don't see? Ah, oh, man, it was some, it was just one group out of uh, New Orleans. Them niggas hated us. We ain't know who they was. I ain't even know who they was till about 15 years later, like, but they really wanted to be bone. I don't even know their name, but mm. they know who they are. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to give them no publicity like that, man. Of course not. You don't want to give them no pub. Them niggas man. was weak, you know what I'm you saying? I like, gave them enough pub by saying where they was from. Yeah, yeah. They, them yeah. niggas down there now, they go take that little segment and say, see, yeah, see, yeah. he was hating yeah. us the whole we time. We already gave them yeah. enough pub. You was a hater, lazy bone. <laughs> We already called them where they was from, so now they going to be feeling good. Nigga, nigga said where we was from, dog. Nigga can't never call me no hater, man. I, You know, I, I open doors for niggas. Exactly. So, you know I mean, like, mm. they can say what they want to say. That if, if, if that's what you got to say about me, you really don't know me because you can ask anybody who know me. You know what I mean? Y'all like, don't gave a lot of cats opportunities, dog. Yeah, I mean, a whole lot they, of them. Cause they was given to us, you know what I mean. Right. I'm a nigga. We Cleveland, man. Who would imagine? Like, you got to think. Ninety three. When, when y'all put out Menace to Society, you know 93. how much influence that shit was in my life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all, like you, growing up in the hood. That song, mm-hmm. nigga, right there. Like we was. That was the and we was living that when we left Cleveland. We was living that. Like so opportunity was provided to us for us to meet Easy e from Cleveland. You look to the, I'm right here, this nigga driving, and I'm shotgun looking like this easy motherfucking E. Yeah, it's one of the moments I talk about, <clears throat> dog. One time, like, when we f- first seeing y'all, all y'all, like, nigga, we on the West Coast, we seeing y'all, though, but we just seeing y'all in the movie, so that, and that was unheard of. Cleveland, nigga, like movies and like that shit was a dream. You know what I'm saying? We was afforded them opportunities. So I I try to give it back. Sometimes though, bro, you don't see it like you ever bring one of the homies from back at the crib out here, dog, and just let them hang out. Like you know you got them homies, they ain't got no interest in being in the entertainment. Mm-hmm. They just steal your it's still some niggas like that out there that's just gonna always be your nigga, your same nigga. No, I don't wanna do nothing, my nigga. You ain't gotta give me nothing, but I'm gonna come out and fuck with you. Right. And they get out here and get to seeing this shit and be like, man, that was such and such. I bought my homeboy Ted out here a few weeks ago. And he was like, nigga, you just really know all these niggas, don't you? You just floating around like they regular. I said, he's regular niggas, dog. Right. They, they people. Just right. like you. Them niggas just make music. 
I just tell them, like, you see why I'm in California? Because this where they at, nigga. Yeah, right yeah, because it damn sure ain't going down in Cleveland, man. Mm-mm. But, man, I know I ain't asked you nowhere. I just didn't want to rehash a bunch of the same shit, man. Because right. sometimes people get y'all in these interviews bad. y'all the dumbest shit dog in the world. Yeah, yeah that, that, and I hate them type of motherfucking interviews. It's like they just trying to reach instead of having the conversation and letting the shit be natural. They trying to ask, so, man, did you walk in on such and such when they was doing this and that? You know, they just want to come right off the bat with some bullshit. Exactly. Yeah, I think I think this, you know, the conversation of just real niggas conversation. Yeah, we just try to talk and conversate you know with saying? niggas and get a little insight, get the people a little insight about, you know, how it was and, and just real shit. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. people look for that realism. You know, you come from these places. They just want to hear a little uh, a little bit of history about the same struggle, right. the same struggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and hopefully it motivates And, and that's to an average nigga, like you said. We get niggas who listen to us, truck drivers, motherfuckers who just be chilling. They just want to hear that motherfuckers is normal motherfuckers right. sometimes. Yeah, yeah, and hear your perspective on stuff. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of time niggas don't want to hear like, you got a problem with this motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, well, shit, this boy. conspiracy that happened, or we heard this, or we heard. Th- man, I, I don't, I don't like to do that. And that's something I used to tell Steele about. Like, well, we just got to talk to niggas about. And if, if, if it's a connection to the street, you know what I'm saying? We as, we as, as, as grown motherfuckers know how to conversate without having to dig into controversy and bullshit right. to to a, to a please a certain narrative. You it's feel me? Much of that right now. You know, one thing I did want to ask you, though, dog, they have been talking about these rich white folks, these rich folks that went to the bottom of the ocean and they own, went deeper than where the whales go. Mm-hmm. And that just really governed the news, right, for most of the week, right? Mm-hmm. But you had all these girls missing in Cleveland, right? Mm-hmm. If you know this is a pattern, man, if we not careful, dog, they go fuck around and try to wipe us out, my nigga. Because it's all these, and they not just doing it to the black girls, but they doing it to the Mexican girls. It's a um, gang of young ladies missing from Mexico, right? Mm-hmm. Gang of little girls, man, between 9 and 14, that was, you know, coming across the border, just disappear, right? Mm-hmm. Same thing happened in Cleveland. Same thing happened in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Now you notice a pattern, man. Anybody that they deem as being indispen- easily dispensable, mm-hmm. they like disappearing, dog. Mm-hmm. I think it's something behind that shit, bro. I mean, you know, I'm I'm just going to say, man, America, man. This is America, you know what where I'm the, Yeah, where the government is set up and the oh, shit you see. see. I mean, they give you clues to shit. And, and we done seen enough shit. On TVs and the news and conspiracy theories and movies and all to know it's shit that goes down. Yeah, and I, you know what? Not even the when biggest they, conspiracy. When they want to cover it up, it's shit they that goes and they it up, it, it, it's Because just, if you ever notice, though, bro, check this out, both of y'all. If you ever notice, when it be some shit deep going down like that, it's always something crazy that happened, like a mass shooting. Mm-hmm. Like something just crazy happened that's almost like a distraction. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what it is. It's distraction. like they put out all of these distractions, man, the media and all that stuff, right? They put all these distractions out there to distract you from the shit that's real, right? Mm-hmm. They don't show you about these folks that don't jump in the boat. You know how many niggas die in the water every day, my nigga, that they don't, the news don't cover? Right. So look, the the submarine thing happened, right? Mm-hmm. All that, all that coverage, all that media coverage, 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 coverage. But they didn't tell you, so it was a it was a a, a boat carrying like seven people. seven hundred mm-hmm. people. Yeah, the people that people died. Mexicans, them died. Yeah, they, they they only saved like a hundred of them. Mm-hmm. But they ain't talk about that. Why? Because they brown people, man. Yeah, it's like anybody you know I mean? anybody anybody that's not of importance to them, bro. Right. They feel like they can get away with it almost, and sometimes they hide stuff in plain sight. Like, they've been talking, I know you don't like shit like eight, but I got to talk about this, it's real. They talking about it's a moon, they don't found another moon that's been following the earth for the last thousand years, right? Mm-hmm. And you just discovered it, how you know it's been following the earth for a thousand years than if you just discovered it, right? Man, I don't believe no motherfucker still walked on the moon. You know what, though? You know, I mean, I, I I always look at that picture they all, they showed us in school, they put the flag in the moon. Mm-hmm. Is it any oxygen on the moon? How's the motherfucking flag floating? 
That's what I'm saying, dog. It's a lot of little stuff like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, I know you be like, ain't hey, the moon hot? Don't fuck with that shit, man. Ain't the I moon hot? Because, like I said, when it comes to this thing that we call the government and presidents and fucking congressmen and shit, that's another world that that we know nothing. You be seeing all these motherfucking shows and secret layers and Project X's and all this shit. That shit, that shit be real, real dog. Hell yeah. They ain't showing you that shit for nothing. So you could be, you would be a damn fool to believe half the shit they tell you in the news. Yeah, dog. Because it's all to, it's all to pull the wool over your eyes or to switch a root tactic. You like, know, you if, see and if a you nigga ain't down smart. there playing the game mm-hmm. and shit, and if you ain't paying attention, a nigga move that the shell game. <laughs> like, but like you said though, bro, a lot of people don't have the cognitive skills to understand like ain't no oxygen how's how's the how's the flag just waving like that right you feel what i'm saying how's the flag waving so you got this other thing and then they said that there was a big ass they've been talking about it's a spaceship or something up there but i'm gonna tell you like this bro it's so much shit that they hide from us dog i think if they did tell us the truth dog it'd probably be mass chaos out here dog the world we barely hanging on by a thread anyway dog uh, it's gonna be mass chaos anyway. Yeah, because they created. it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because they want to depopulize the earth. They want to, you know what I mean? They, they want as less people as possible. Like they earth. ask gonna be here to monitor it. They don't care though, dog. I'm gonna tell you something what I noticed about white folks. I got a homeboy, right? Cool dude. Me and his son play football together. He's a billionaire. Mm-hmm. Don't flew on his jet with him and everything else like that. Cool dude. He owns the brewery. Have you ever seen that brewery that's on the 210 and the 60 freeway? That's like on the 210 and the 605? Yeah, the Miller Brewing. The, Bru- the Miller Brewing Company. He owns that land right there, right? And he was saying, yeah, their lease is up. I'm about to, you know, I'm about to probably sign them into another 75-year lease. Mm-hmm. And this dude, like, 65, dog, I'm thinking, I'm like, man, you doing that business? You ain't going to be He said, no, nah, but my grandchildren will be here. My great. Them folks playing ahead, dog. They playing... We sitting up here thinking about what we go do tomorrow, my guy. Them dudes is playing in 30, 40, 50 years ahead in some cases, dog. Oh, yeah. And got they stuff. They're making sure that poverty never touches no part of their family. Yeah, because it's kind of hard for a motherfucker who's struggling every day on the day to day to think 50 30 years, years from now. <laughs> exactly. Fuck, I might not be here two days from now. But that's what it's I'm saying, It's different dog. for a motherfucker who's been handed a billion-dollar company from the time he was a fucking toddler or right. some shit like that. Mm-hmm. That's the difference, and people want you to be able to think on the same aspect. But, nigga, shit, I'm struggling to put fucking food on the table. thing about this right. dude, though, eight hey, what's funny is he, I think, got his GED. He's not no college. Yet. He's a dude from New Jersey. Mm-hmm. That's how me and him got cool. He just, the fear of poverty kept him going. He had to help have somebody that helped him out to get into real estate, right? And he owns all this property and stuff now, but I was just looking at the way he maneuvered, dog, and that, having that conversation with him kind of changed my perspective on a lot of things. Ain't that crazy how you just said it? His fear of poverty and his ambition, somebody saw that and they fronted him mm-hmm. to be able to do what he do. Right? Fronted him, yep. How many times a nigga going to do that for you? Oh, man, it never happened. We got a lot of geniuses in the hood How now. How many times a nigga going to see your potential and really go, you know something? I'm going to give you this $5 million mm-hmm. and let you take off. Because I know 20 years from now, you finna be this motherfucker that we don't get motherfuckers to do like that for us. Oh no, dog, it's you get me because a nigga been conditioned with that that slave mentality to where nobody don't you don't want to see the next nigga. You come get a up. few, yeah. Easy did it for y'all. Right. It wasn't no white motherfucking. It wasn't Sony or right. Universal or whatever. Right. Easy said, you know something? You feel me? But how many niggas really go? You get me? Oh, still, your idea is cracking. Let me front you this million dollars and let you get it going. Lay, I'm going to tell you something right now, dog. And I don't like to brag a lot, dog. I don't do this. I don't say this nothing to be bragging, dog. But we gave, we helped launch Math Hoffa. Mm-hmm. 
who else we don't have, man? There's been so many big podcasts, dog, that I initially had my hand in and gave them a send off, mm. and they went on to become successful podcasts. I look at companies, dog. Some of these guys, they go get five or six million dollars in funding, twelve for success. Give them some money. I'm like, man, these niggas ain't did half the shit I did, dog. And they go give them some money. Everything I don't did just done been off the monkey hustle. So, you know, like eight said with the shells and the motherfucking thing. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna make some shit happen, dog. We don't get them same opportunities, dog. So I'm glad to see brothers like you when y'all do get in position, man. Y'all do go back and try to Definitely. lift some brothers up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I wish our brothers would appreciate that more when they do get that lift up off the ground because you could pick any number of people to get that. They've been chosen, though. So they got to represent so they can go back and get somebody because you can't drag everybody on the building by yourself. Right. But if you get if you pull 10 people up and they go get another 10 people, then eventually everybody go get up there. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So what you got what, what you got cracking now, dog? What you got you about to blast off with? I got a little free mixtape, man. I just, you know, was exercising my lyrical skills a little bit and uh, just put out a little mixtape called right. Too Easy. I mean, it's a little mixtape of where I took songs that uh, artists been paying homage to Bone Thugs and Harmony. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, and it's artists that I would like to work with as well. So what I did was took the songs that they took from us, put new verses on their shit. And, That's tight. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And just to let people know that, you know, I'm still, I'm still, you know, rapping is is my love. You know right. what I mean? Like putting them words together, telling the story. I love that. You know what I mean? So I got the mixtape, man, and that's, Something for free for my fans. You can download that on uh, livemixtapes.com. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I got an album coming out, too, called Hypnotic Rhythms. You know what I mean? So Hypnotic Rhythms, uh, my first single was called Pillar. And um, that'll be out later this summer. You know what I'm saying? So I'm doing that, man. Harmony House Entertainment. Uh, my girl got her podcast that's about to come out called Tipping with Tiny. Oh, that's hard. Yeah, tipping with Tiny and and Mines is lounging with Lazy. So we do a little partnership with that and kind of intertwine with each other sometimes on that. You know what I mean? And um, man, my kids. You know, we talked about the kids. They doing music. You know, I'm just getting ready for this 30 year anniversary for Bone Thugs and Harmony. '94 is the 30th year. Man, we need that movie, bone. dog. We we need a Bone Thugs movie, dog. We need yeah, actually MC8 fucking movie too, dog. It's so yeah, many incredible bro. stories in hip hop, dog, that can be told, man. Man, it'd be an honor to have eight in our movie. You oh know yeah, what definitely. I'm, I'm I'm with a part, definitely. You know what I'm saying? So you play me a little Easy E or something. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We do <laughs> we doing a biopic, you know, and our movie is basically an alley oop from the NWA movie. The way so it that, is one being it is one in production right now? Uh I, not in production, but the the uh, writing part of it. Right. Oh, that's dope, man. You know okay, that's cracking. So the the ideal of, of the biopic, it pick up where NWA left off at. You know what I'm saying? If y'all remember in the movie, uh DJ Yella was giving Easy E the mixtape. Uh, he was giving him East 1999 Eternal. Mm-hmm. He died before he heard the finished tape. Mm-hmm. So at the end of that movie, when he passed away, he was let it, the uh, East 1999 Eternal album was sitting right there on his on his desk that he never got to hear. You know what I'm saying? So that's how we pick it up. That's that's the alley oop. I feel like. NWA threw us on the movie side, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's hard that they attention to detail was like that, dog. Exactly. Yeah. That's hard, dog. And I, I really hope, man, because I, I know that's gonna be a massive movie. Y'all got a fan base that's incredible, dog. Y'all fan base and y'all fans, them type of fans, they fight for y'all. Man. Definitely, man. I definitely appreciate our fans, man. You know the diversity of our fans. It ain't just like a lot of uh, hip hop artists like. It'd be bl- it's a, like black or our we got diverse. Y'all got like, everybody, Mex- dog. Mexicans love bone thugs and exactly. hard. White people love Hispanics. Uh, man, Asians like our our crowd be so diverse, man. And and like you said, they gung ho for us. So we appreciate that. Yeah, man. y'all 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 hip hop contribution was definitely not stereotyped. 
to one uh particular crowd. Right. You you can say like y'all was one of them international uh hip hop artists. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, they have to be able to respect that. Yeah, uh, dog. And you know what? One more thing. It's a lot of niggas who don't make it that far Hell as far no. as this hip hop game is right. concerned. Yo, definitely. You know a lot of them. Right. You know that niggas who were left underground, right. so to speak. Mm-hmm. So to be able to come from just hip hop, period, and to be able to make it to like you said, y'all have probably been some everywhere, right. all around the world all, with this hip hop shit. All you over feel me? the world, yeah. Coming from Cleveland, you know, yeah, that's some crazy shit, though. Yeah. You think about it, y'all work with Easy E, Tupac, and Biggie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like those are legend. Those are like they immortalized now, dog. You know, rest in peace. But y'all work with all of them, dog. Right. Do you ever just sit up in bed at night and be like, nigga can't tell me shit, nigga. I was fucking with Pac and Biggie, nigga. I mean, well, you know, that's 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 part of the seal, the deal of the legacy. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? To have, like, and, and for them to be beefing the way they were, you know what I mean? For us to not be involved in the, uh, the all, or the pan, the, the all that, all the problems they was having, it was like Definitely. being from Cleveland left us mutual. Right. In order to, and, yeah. and not only that shit, y'all, y'all shit, y'all were proteges of the of the Godfather. Right. You feel me? Mm-hmm. As far as what we concern on the West Coast, mm-hmm. you get me. Everybody has their. Oh, yeah, this is the Godfather of rap or whatever. But as far as we concerned on the West Coast, with our shit, y'all came from the streets. We came for Easy E is looked at around the world as that as that right. motherfucker, man. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like Easy opened the door, not just for for shit. Easy is what made me want a motherfucking goddamn. He is what made me go, nigga. You could rap about the neighborhood, right? Hell yeah. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Oh, I could rap about the one times right. and selling crack, right. and I could rap about blasting and and claiming the hood. Oh my god, you just right. hope because by at that point, even though we were street niggas. It was UTFO and it was, you know, it was fun rap. You was rapping, playing all that shit, rapping. yeah. It was and even though you a shit. nigga coming from the streets, you like, I don't do no shit like that, man. So what's what's my way in? Right. You gotta have you a way to wiggle in. And when Easy came with boys in the hood, like nigga, just nigga six fours and forty ounces and nigga police, and he opened up a whole fucking world for niggas man. who who like, I, I'm not that. This is my identity. Right. And and so he opened that door for the CMWs, for the bones, yep. for the above the laws, oh, for man. the for, man, a gang of niggas, man, who was for talking sure. that street shit. For sure. Let me ask you this, Lee. Y'all ain't never collaborated with Dr. Dre? Nope. I, I mean, wonder I, what ain't I, happened, I, dog. I got a couple tracks from Dre that I wasn't ever able, we wasn't really able to use, but Dre thing was when the opportunity was presenting itself, we was internally fucked up. Mm. You know what I mean? And that nigga Dre was like, if I can't have all five of y'all, I ain't fucking with y'all. And that was that. So hopefully one day he'll get it. I know all of us individually tried to, you know, that's Dre. Who don't want a Dre beat? Of course. You know what I'm saying? So, Dre's vision is like, like nigga, I, need, I see it. Yeah, he like, I, all of y'all. I can't get yeah. all that. You know what I mean? Because we all, we all tried to go individually. But Dre, you know, the way the word got back to me, like Dre said, if he can't have all y'all, then we know it's, it's no point. We got to make, y'all can't make that happen, though? Shit, what's up, Dre? Holla. We that here. some cold shit. And, we, we, need, cracking, and we need another bone album. You hey, know look, me, I, I'll get it cracking. Well, hey, one call from Dre. Watch how fast all five niggas get together. Mm-hmm. That would be his story. Mm-hmm. That would be some cold shit, dog. And it gotta happen on that next Bone album, dog. Man, come on, let's preach on that broom. We What's up with the next into- Bone album, dog? Well, when is that coming together, man? Will we go get just get the, 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 the one of the, the greatest hip hop group of all time assembled? One of the greats. So the Legacy Project, man. We talking about the uh, a double album, a world tour. We talking about. A coffee table book, and we talking about the biopic. Oh yeah, that's correct. You know what I'm saying four elements. You know what I mean of the world: wind, fire, water. I, I could definitely land. see that. 
You know if what I'm anybody so, can pull that shit off, y'all, y'all, that, y'all, y'all, one of them groups, man. Y'all one of them international groups, man. Man, I, I drop everything I'm doing for an opportunity to work with Dr. Dre. Hell yeah. Be sure my niggas feel the same. But you man. know what, though, dog? All, it's a couple of producers, man. I always thought Bone would be real beasty on. I, I still think now y'all should keep. I think y'all most impotent incarnation, dog, is when y'all were unique. Mm hmm. I think Unique got that shit, but That's I the chemistry right there. Yeah, I would like to see him somehow be involved, yep. but I would love to see y'all go fuck with a Justice League. Mm -hmm. You know, people like that Justice League, the Timberland. Is, uh, Timberland. Yeah. That stuff would sound crazy, but keep a cat like Unique over there, kind of, you know, so the formula all stay the same. You feel what I'm saying? So the soft still there. You feel what I'm saying? Unique, Unique would be the the overseer of the music. Period. You know what I mean? But. To bring in all those, dip, man, that's a dream come true. Now, that, that's the way to close the door for me. But y'all deserve that, though, dog. Y'all motherfucking bone thugs in harmony. Like I always tell this man, one of my things for him, I'm like, man, hey, we need to get you one more major album, my nigga. One more major one. These ones is dope. He dropped some incredible material, but this nigga is nastier now than he was when he first came out. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing changed. You know, wine just get better with time. Exactly. But think about your little brother when you working on that album, yeah. man. I'm, that's that's a bucket list right there too. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that I ain't nothing but a love. conversation, dog. That we, that, that, that we ain't just do, man. I just do it for just. I'm just one of them niggas who came into hip hop because I loved it, and I didn't look at it for you know the accolades and the and the fame and the and the money and all of that. I just want to make records, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, I thought I was going to still be a gang-banging dope dealer nigga on the block. Just, I was just going to make records and shit. I never looked at it as being where a nigga has been or where a nigga's going to. Right. But, you know, we credit it. It's been here for 50 years. Uh, I, I came into the game early, and it's just been the love of it. You know what right. I'm saying? So that's what keep a nigga going. It's not so much as trying to find that next big payday off of hip hop is just uh now with all the niggas have contributed just to be able to be honored and respected as going yeah that nigga was you right. feel me right. you know and, and sometimes like you say you see all these lists and you see all these motherfuckers with their opinions about who is the greatest and who is this and who is that? But how can that how official can that shit be? Because right. my idea of the greatest might not be yours or might not be Steele's, and that's not to discredit the motherfucker. That's just what the hell y'all at twenty six, uh, twenty one, twenty one. Man, that's it's, way it's too. It's all old. a matter of opinion. You but know you know what, what though, like, Did that come from because some of these journalists ain't from the like, culture, bro. Not to cut you off, but. Who was that number one? Outcast? Outcast. And no disrespect to Outcast. I ain't mad at Outcast at all. But I listen to more Bone than I listen to Outcast. Right. I mean, that's just mm -hmm. no disrespect. I loved Outcast. Mm -hmm. But past a certain era, I didn't listen to Outcast anymore because it just wasn't my flow. You right. take their first motherfucking album, right. banged it all day. Like it was, you get mm -hmm. me? But if you want to compare that to the speaker box, you know, record, mm -hmm. I really didn't bang that as much. Right. But you get me? You want to compare that to Bone Thugs and Harmony? I banged every East, 1999. When I banged, I, that motherfucker wore out in my motherfucker. We're so cold. This, my kids is getting hip to that now, man. My son to play ball. Mm -hmm. And my son is the fireman, man. My oldest son. They'd come playing me some of y'all stuff sometimes, like, Dad, what you know about this? I'd be like, boy, sit down somewhere. I think the younger generation is starting to maybe appreciate some of the um, beginnings of hip-hop, mm -hmm. you hear me? Because I couldn't get my son to listen to shit that we played. But just like you said, he'll come in there and play some Nas, he'll play some Biggie, he'll play some of my shit, right. you know? I guess because sometimes a motherfucker need to be refreshed and they need ears to, need to hear need to some, be you know, I'm quality. You, Chris yeah. loved DJ Quick, though. Like, like his muse, like Quick said, I like, I like Quick got the beats. Oh, you know definitely. what I mean? He talk about Quick's beats and stuff, so he getting hip. But you got to remember, for them, that's like us listening to our parents' records. Like when my mama would play Curtis Mayfield in the house of Al Green, 
I grew up loving that music too. And now I I probably listen to 50 50 90s hip hop, 90s early 2000s hip hop, and more Al Green and more oldies than anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. I listen to the oldies too. And just for the record, if I was making the list, it'd be Run DMC would probably be the first one on my list. I mean, you, know you was I mean? just saying that yesterday. Yeah. You know what, bro? I was arguing with Glasses the other day because Glasses is a baby. Mm -hmm. You know, he you know he a grown man, but he a baby in his hip-hop stuff, right? He was trying to argue me that LL was way more of a factor than Run DMC. I said, bro, LL was the man, but he didn't come to the man until after Run DMC had left the throne almost. Them was the first cats that had a shoe deal, dog. They was the first ones that had an Adidas deal, dog. They was the first ones. They dominated MTV when MTV first came out. That Walk This Way record was probably one of the biggest records, was the biggest look for hip-hop at that time. And had that record not been made, hip-hop probably wouldn't have went as far as it did because it introduced hip-hop to mainstream America. Right, Glass is my bro, too, but I, I would tell him, watch Crush Groove. What was, was just saying? He was just saying. You know what I'm saying? Because speaking on them, Crush Groove. Run, run DMC, them, them was the man. Them, they was headlining back then, and then LL had to come in with the little radio set, Fox. Remember that shit? Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Fox, he had to, he had to. Uh, That's how Russell and them found LL and signed him to Def Jam. Yeah, he had to audition for his that spot was, at that time. That was basically like his little, uh, his promo. Yeah, because yeah. the Beastie Boys was in they there too. Signed him to. He had I need a beat out. Yeah. So they figured, man, what better way than to promote our first fucking artist yeah. than to put him in the fucking movie? It it was brilliant. But Run DMC, like, you gonna get the argument because it's fifty years, and you know nowadays they got so many. You get me? There's so many groups, and there's so many, but. I think you have to give it to Run DMC because it's like they 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 showed a motherfucker as far as a group is concerned how you really can make it, and they made they it the in first the fucking superstars. tough times of hip hop. Hell yeah, I'm a, where motherfuckers mm -hmm. was like hip hop. Yeah, the like, fuck is where this that, shit? Where they only played that shit on Saturdays Man, on the come radio. On. And they you. they were able to break down the barriers of being able for four niggas like Outkast and Wu-Tang and Compton's Most Wanted and N.W.A., you get me, without them setting the motherfucking path right, and kicking None down the doors of the stereotype of, of nigga music and these thug motherfuckers right. exactly. and leather hats. Because you got to understand where hip-hop was at the time, like... I don't think NWA got rated nowhere as high as they should have, dog, because Nobody they... Nobody did, man. That shit... Just, they did, you know, the run NWA down as low as they did, dog, was almost, like, disrespectful because, to me, if I'm going to put a top five together, I'm always tell people it don't matter where you number that because I can't say one is greater than the other, but you have to have in your top ten, man, if you don't have motherfucking uh, NWA... Motherfucking EPMD. Right. Motherfucking just all of those pivotal groups, man. Um, Beastie Boys, Beastie man. Beastie Boys. Beastie Boys, All these man. people, dog, because those people are the reason for the season. You can't have fucking C and D before A and B, bro. Right. Well, you know, like them, them lists, that, that ain't nothing but a list, man. Like, it's a like personal was opinion. Saying, yeah, this you is know, your personal run opinion. DMC, motherfucking thing. You know, even the Wu-Tang Clan, but to me, Bone is worthy of that top 10 consideration because... After you get past all of them, right, run DMCs and all of them, then you come up into that early, like late nineties, dog. Mm -hmm. You got to put Bone there because that was like the next evolution of hip hop, mm -hmm. because it brought a new flow in. What nobody, everything was margin to margin. Then the been the thing the same, but then they came to say, right. then the funny brother, y'all you know, came with them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it was so fresh, but you understood everything y'all was saying. And that shit was so dope, dog. And the music was melodic. You almost smoke a joint. You be riding down the street just like. Well, all I gotta say, man, is you know we ain't done yet. So you know they could, they can, they can reserve their opinions for when we done. Cause you know to see a list like that make me pick up the phone and call my brothers like y'all. Y'all want to show these niggas who who do what. You know what I'm saying? So we ain't done. So they, and it, it really don't matter, man. 
I've been, no, a, I've, I've been able to take care of my family exactly. off, off this whole oh, yeah, for sure, so, I say that about all the times I think about I got fucked and money stolen and all that shit. And at the end of the day, I go, you know something? Um, my son going to college. Mm-hmm. I'm still able to wake up every morning and do something that, you know, that you I love. don't regret Right. As far as, God damn, I got to get up today and right. I got to, you feel me? There's a lot of people who, where it's nothing against the average motherfucker. But, but there's a lot of love. motherfuckers who, you know, there's a lot of people who have to get up and go through that struggle. Yeah, yeah, we blessed, you though. Me? So to be blessed, to be able to do something that you enjoy and, mm-hmm. and you know, it, it, you get to go on trips and you get to meet other people and, you know, the perks of comes with being an entertainer sometimes. And, you know, you wouldn't trade it for nothing. So we go through the roller coaster rides and sometimes the disrespect and sometimes not feeling like motherfuckers give us our props for all what we have done for fucking hip hop. But at the end of the day, you go, so I go, you know what? So what? Right. It's, it's a blessing. Yeah. I'm I'm good. Day. You yeah. feel me? I'm good. With, and none of that shit matters anymore. What they need to do, they need right. to start coming to the um, people really in the culture and asking about them lists. Because to me, it would be like somebody coming to me asking me to make the to create the top 100 oldies of all time. I'm going to feel like in the way I'm not qualified, I'm going to go talk to my mama, my pops, my uncles, mm. and ask them what was going on. Because I didn't live in that time. So some of these little niggas that might be 2021. 20, they don't understand the impact that a bone had or the impact that a Wu Tang or Run DMC for that matter, them is ancient. And I didn't realize how old hip hop was to glasses told me one day because we was talking about sampling. And he said, No, big bro, that's too old. You got to go back to Warren G. I said, Warren G and them was just yesterday. That's biting, dog. And I thought about it. I said, That shit was 25, 30 years ago, yeah. dog. Yeah, we were sampling the shit out of Roger and them, you know what I mean? Like it uh <laughs> all the funk, that shit. 30 years later, we were sampling them. So, And that's why I did the mixtape that I did, because I wanted them new artists to know that we appreciate them, you know, going in the crates and finding that old music. You make sure you send me a link to that motherfucker so I can put it in our description. I got you. I got that's you. That's why I put the links sure. in the description, man. So we, we don't hold you captive here long enough, man. We appreciate y'all hanging out with us once again. Right sure. on. And, um, hey, y'all. Make sure, man, we go put the link to that mixtape down there, man. Make sure y'all go bang that, man, and go support that and go flood Dr. Dre's. I don't know if Dre, if Dre too rich to fuck with Twitter or anything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he probably I don't fuck with Twitter. the staff and shit that yeah. answers Y'all just shit. make sure y'all hit Dre up, man. Tell him that we need that Bone Thug collaboration, man. Man, please do. You know what I'm saying? Let, let him know. Dre, I'm letting you know right now, man. We we here. If the opportunity is there, we, we there. Hell yeah. And we gone. Yeah. Princess Gangster Chronicles. We gonna tell you how we go. Uh, if I lie, my nose will grow like Pinocchio. We gonna tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. Gangster Chronicles. This is not your average.